Hey guys, it's AZ Ames. So I'm doing a customer service story time. I have a few stories and I will have a part two featuring my husband because he's got a lot funnier ones than I do. So I worked um, at this place for a couple months. I'm not going to mention any names of the business that I worked at, but um, I was working in the deli. I was a deli clerk and um, this is my first time being a deli clerk and being in the deli, especially around the time that I got hired, which is around Super Bowl season, that's a lot of demand because, you know, everybody's getting ready for their parties. Everybody wants sandwiches. Everybody wants, you know, um, subs made. Everyone wants uh, some pizza, some chicken, you know, whatever, whatever you need for the, the Super Bowl parties. So this lady comes in and I think she wasn't getting ready for a Super Bowl party. I think she was just a normal paying customer. So she came in and she was like, yeah, I would like a pound of turkey. And I was like, okay. And how would you like your turkey sliced? Would you like it thinly sliced, like medium sliced, thick sliced? And she's like, no, I want my turkey shaved, completely shaved. She didn't want it in any slice, any thin slices. And on the machine, the dials have um, numbers. And I forget if it's either the higher the number, the, the thinner it is, or the lower the number, the thinner it is. But anyways, so she wanted it the dial all the way to the lowest setting, to where it would come out like thin chunks, basically. So she's like, I want my turkey sliced like that. So I was like, great, coming right up for you, ma'am. So I'm shaving her turkey and turkey as it is, is very thin and rips very easily. So you can imagine my annoyance when I had to shave this turkey. So again, now mind you, she wants a pound of shaved turkey and I was like you've got to be kidding me so you have wax paper that you have to get to be the bottom of the meat that you're cutting so that it doesn't get contaminated you know the customer has sanitary meat so she um was complaining because I was taking too long and now I had told her Ma'am, I just started, unfortunately, you know, I'm going as fast as I can, you know, and you're asking for a pound and I'm, I will be willing to give you a pound of this meat, but that's kind of impossible. And so she looks at me like I'm an idiot and she's like, it's not impossible. You just don't want to do it. And I'm like, okay, let me keep shaving away. So I was shaving and so the wax paper's here and I had about maybe this much of the shaved turkey that didn't even equal half a pound that didn't even equal half of a pound so i was getting frustrated at this point and i have anxiety and so i was starting to get nervous and starting to turn red in the face because i'm very pale so she was just making me nervous because she's over here, back here, just talking away and talking shit to me, basically. And so, uh, yeah, so my coworker comes over and he's like, hey, what's wrong with this customer? And I was like, I told him the story. I was like, she wants a pound of shaved turkey. And he's like, oh, heck no. He's like, she is insane if she thinks she's going to get a pound of that and expect you to be quick about it. And I was like, so can you handle it for me? And he had been there way longer than I had. So he was like super well with customers and he was, you know, a regular. So he went up to her, he's like, ma'am, unfortunately, you know, she's doing the best she can. And, um, you're asking for shaved turkey and shaved turkey in a pound would take a very long time. And all of a sudden, this woman's attitude completely changes. She's super nice and she's like, oh yeah, I understand, honey. No, that's okay, whatever you think is best. And I was looking at her like, really? You were being rude to me? But at the minute he comes over, you're super nice? What? What's the difference? So, um, another story, I worked at another place and I worked at this place for almost a year, almost. I was shy off of, I think a week being a year. 
So this guy comes in and I worked the graveyard shift at this establishment. And now the thing people seem to not understand is that the place I worked at, me being a graveyard cashier, I was the only cashier and worker in the entire building. The only people at my shift were my manager, me, and our pharmacist, three of us, dealing with customers from, I would go in at 10 all the way till eight in the morning, I believe. Eight, yeah, eight in the morning. So I would be alone while my manager was doing his manager, um, uh, excuse me, his manager duties and I would be up at the register by myself, you know, cleaning the front half of the store, whatever needed to be done um, while he was doing stuff in the office or if he was helping the pharmacist or if he had to do stuff in the back, you know, I and I was the only one. So if a customer or seven customers came in and somebody was ready to be checked out, I had to run up and go check them out. Yeah, he was cool and everything. Um, he would help me every now and then. He's like, oh, don't worry, I got it. And so he would go get it for me. And I would be so appreciative of him. Oh, he was such a great manager. And so there was this one time where my manager was in the office doing whatever he was doing, um, his manager duties. And this guy comes in and this guy is heavily covered in tattoos, like, you know, fully tatted out. And now one thing about me that you will come to understand is that I do not judge people with tattoos like majority of the population does. Actually, many people will say that I'm stereotyping, but I'm more judgmental to somebody who's not covered in tattoos versus somebody who is covered in tattoos because my husband is pretty tattooed up and he is the sweetest, most kindest, most awesome human being that I have been graced by his presence. Now, that's not to say that if someone were to anger him, that he's just going to, you know, take it lightly because he's not. Um, he will handle what he needs to handle. And he's a very strong, big guy. He's got big muscles and a lot of like upper body strength. He's got a lot of leg strength. So he's he's a real tall guy. He's like 6'4". He looks very intimidating. He always has, and I tell him all the time, he has resting bitch face because he just hardly ever smiles out in public. So I don't judge people with tattoos. Even before I met my husband, I never looked at a tattooed person and was like, oh, he looks like a crook or oh, he looks suspicious or oh he looks this i love tattoos i love people who have tattoos i don't have anything against people with tattoos so he was heavily tattooed and he was bald so most people would look at him and think oh he's a thief or oh he's gonna rob me or oh he's you know a hooligan he's a criminal whatever the case that people think about people with tattoos so he walks in, he's having a normal conversation, he's um, getting what he needs from the store, and say, I'm just going to name off some random things, but I know one thing he definitely did have for sure, he had a pair of scissors. He had a pair of scissors, um, like, you know, normal construction paper scissors. He had scissors, uh, I think a deodorant, um, say some snacks, and what else like a toothbrush or something and toothpaste so he had all those items in his basket he was coming up and he was you know having a normal conversation with me he was very nice he was very polite and he started you know grabbing all his things and so he was just talking and then he said the words I will never forget he said I don't feel like paying for this and shrugged his shoulders and walked right out with everything but the scissors which Okay, but why come up to me and have a conversation with me acting like you are going to purchase something if you're just coming up to me to, what, show me that you're going to steal? What What am I supposed to do? I can't do anything. Us in customer service, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do when people are stealing. I've dealt with that being in my job that I was in for a year 
I couldn't do anything. There was nothing I could do. So, another story. Um, same place I worked at for a year. Um, this customer, he came in and now he, the same thing, was t- he wasn't covered in tattoos, but he did have tattoos. He was a younger guy. He um, had a, um, a hat on and he was wearing like baggy clothing. And now he didn't give me, he didn't make me feel like he was suspicious about something. He, the reason he made me feel suspicious is because he walked over to the, um, the electronic section. So like my register's right here, my register's here. And like down a little a ways this way is, um, the electronics that, you know, are locked in on locks on the wall. And I heard him like jiggling something like trying to like rip it off without you know having me come get it so it was this like antenna thing I think and he was like oh um and I'm looking at him I'm like I'm watching you like are you are you good and I was like do you need assistance and he's like oh yeah um can you take this for me I want to buy it and I was like okay And so store policy was that whenever we got something from that area because we needed to have the keys, we were supposed to hold the item and walk it up to the register and hold it until they were finished paying. So then he comes up and he was like, oh, can I see that? And I was like, like this, like legit, like, like holding it. And he's like, and he's like coming closer and he's like, oh, can I see it closer? And like, I already had a feeling like, okay, he's going to grab it out of my hand or something and then try to run off. So I bring it close and I'm still holding it like this. And so he like grabs it and yanks really, like really fast. And I'm just like looking at him like, well, that was rude. And he is like this and he's like running and then he stops and just walks out. And his pants were falling at the same time. How I wish more than anything, his pants had fallen so that at least he could have tripped and looked like an idiot. Sorry if you think that's mean, but why, why do, why do all that? If he, I don't understand people. So another story time from the job I worked at for a couple of months. Um, my manager was so stressed out because I guess her job was on the line of the deli. Um, she was really mean about things. Like she was very bossy. She would snap at you because like she was stressed out or they were coming to look at her about something. Management was coming to look at her about something. And she would like snap at you. And she almost made me quit my job. Like I had just gotten there and I think maybe an hour I was there. And I was like, and I kept my mouth shut. I did not tell her nothing I just told another coworker. I was like I am ready to walk out and just that's it and so they told her like that she needed to chill out because that she was you know making me want to like quit and so she chilled out I didn't deal with her the best of the day thank god I dealt with my favorite co-workers I had like two favorite co-workers at this job uh, I miss them but anyways um the two jobs because I worked at the one job for a year um so I needed a second job because they cut my hours and so I went to this other job that was like literally almost 45 minutes away from our apartment and I was like holy crap (sighs) so my job the one I was at for a year started at 11 because they cut hours to 7 30 in the morning yeah 7 30 in the morning And I told my other job, I was like, hey, I work graveyard at this place. So can you not put my schedule like anywhere from the evening to the nighttime? Because, you know, I'm a graveyard cashier over here and excuse me, a deli clerk right here. So they were like, yeah, no problem. We'll give you the mornings. Tell me why I never got a morning shift except for one time so my schedule was from I think one to nine I think it was you know what actually 
my hours were from 10 to 7 in the morning. So they cut my hours like drastically because I originally went in. No, it was 11. Okay. Yeah, I originally went in at 10 o'clock and I had a whole hour before everyone else in the store would leave. And then it would be me by myself. So I started at 10 and finished off at 730. And so they put my schedule from um, like one to nine. And it was 45 minutes away from our apartment. And my, my other job, the one I was at for a year, was literally like down the street. I could walk if I had to. And so they made it from that. So I spent 45 minutes driving back to my apartment just to get five, ten minutes of sleep and then would go to my graveyard job and then would come home and get maybe a couple hours of sleep before I had to go 45 minutes to my other job. Yeah. So it was a, it was getting to be too much. Um, so I didn't last that long with my other job. So, um, yeah. And, um, another story time was from my job for a year. I had a lot of customers because it was, you know, nighttime and the area we were at, people would like to come in and steal things. I had people who would come in and argue with me about the dumbest things. The worst type of people were the couponers. Now, because, not because I don't care about coupons, like get your money, whatever. But what I disliked were when the couponers, they, I guess they would have this down to like a science that they would know exactly how much they were supposed to get back or pay, I should say. So this lady comes in and she, we had just stocked, um, I think that week, but our new ad was finishing at midnight. So she literally showed up at midnight. And so as soon as it was midnight, um, she came in and she went straight to the back, which all our, you know, bathing stuff was back there our you know body wash our shampoo our conditioners and stuff like that so she went straight back there and i literally saw her go into the back of you know the thing and literally go into her basket so i was like now majority of people do not grab sorry majority of people don't grab that much body wash so i was like she's got to be a couponer So she comes up, hi, how are you, honey? How is your night? Are you having a good night? You know, being the sweetest woman to my face. So she comes and she is, (laughs) she's being super nice, like I said. And so I'm bringing up her total. I'm getting all her coupons. One coupon that was like, the deal was like um, for these suave, body washes it's like you buy one you get one free so she had the the suave body washes and she was bringing them up and then after she was like okay um can you use the coupons and the coupon was like 50 cents off so you're literally like paying nothing for these body washes that are normally you know still a good deal buy one get one free you only pay for one and they weren't that expensive at least i don't think they were i don't know i don't use suave body wash Um, and she seen on the total that I think that she had to pay like 25 cents more and she flipped out on me was like, where's your manager? You're obviously an idiot. You don't know what the hell you're doing. I want to talk to your manager. I want to talk to your manager. I want to talk to your manager. So I called my manager and at this time I had my other manager, which she was amazing. I loved her. We were super close to each other. Um, and we just couldn't deal with the BS of customers or our own coworkers because the thing about being, about being a graveyard is that the morning and the afternoon shift all like to say that we're, we're here all night. We're here for like 12 hours. I mean, for 10 hours. So we should have plenty of time to do things, but yet they didn't realize they had eight hours and like five people versus our 10 hours and two of us working because our our um, pharmacist never came forward to help us with anything she had to stay back and do her pharmaceutical duties so like they never understood that 
Because if I had to go like clean the bathrooms or like do something in the back, my manager would have to take the um, cash register until I got back. So they just never understood that. So I call my manager. My manager comes and she's like, what seems to be the problem? My manager was a boss. She did not deal with people. None of their crap. So she's like coming and I could tell her attitude. She's rolling her eyes and she's just like, what's the problem? And so they tell her that I'm an idiot and that I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And so she's just like, well, if you see that these are buy one, get one free, you are already getting a good deal and you're using a coupon on top of that. So one of your coupons didn't go through. What's the issue? And she's like, it's supposed to be this total. It's supposed to be this total. And she's like, well, either way, ma'am, our store manager which was not there told I guess all the managers um from the different hours that customers only had a limit of I think two or three or four or something it depended what you you know what the product was so she's like there's only a limit of four anyways and she's like well I just went to this other establishment and this other establishment that were literally like on the same street just like farther up from us and she's like and they did it for me she's like well that's them that's not us have a great day ma'am and she walked away and she got so angry (laughs) this lady was like well i want to cancel the whole order then so i was like okay and so i had my manager come right back out and she was still standing there she was still waiting and she goes yes what can I you know help me with and she goes I told her this customer would like to um cancel the whole order and she's like okay that's fine and so then my manager cancels the order and grabs all the swab and like puts it into like the cart that I have behind the register and she goes oh no 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 I want to do it in separate transactions my manager got so mad and she was like it's a limit of four and she goes i understand that but i'm gonna do four transactions she goes that's not the way this works and so this lady got even more angry and so she's telling my manager where's your manager i want to talk to your manager i want to talk to your manager and she's like that's fine ma'am you can come back tomorrow and speak to our store manager this lady never came back but she was mad she was hell a mad because my manager was being a to her and oh my god there were so many stories that I have from this one job from a year because I dealt with the most interesting people there was one time a guy came in and obviously he looked homeless um the way he was dressed and stuff he you know was just walking around and so tell me why this man instead of you know just walking straight out He decided to stop and come talk to me and he said, you know, I just want to tell you that I only stole a bandage because my hand and he shows me his hand and he does have like a gash on his hand. But he's like, oh, yeah, I only stole, you know, the bandage for my hand. But tell me why back here in his jacket, he had something that was like this tall. So he looked like he had a horn on his back. So I knew it wasn't just that it had to have been something else. And now, mind you. I used to, on days where truck would come, I would be the one in the back because then on truck, there would be four of us, the two graveyard um, cashiers for like separate days because we only worked four days. Um, So, uh, or was it three days? Let's see, there was, yeah, it was four days, I think. So there was one day where we would all come together, the two graveyard managers and the two graveyard cashiers, and it would be truck night. Well, my graveyard cashier coworker um, was pregnant at the time, so she obviously couldn't unload truck. So I would be the one who would go and unload the truck. And I would be towards the back, so that way she would have easier access to, you know, instead of walking from front to back. And so she... um you know, would stay closer to the register. And this, I used to put the tags onto things. And now I know any and everyone knows that bandages do not have 
tags on them. They don't have security tags on them. So tell me why when he walked out with this giant horn that he did not come in with, the bell went off. The security alarm went off. Because he took something that had an actual tag on it, not something that was a band-aid. So I just had to deal with that. Like I think one of the biggest things that annoyed me about customer service is that people mistook me for an idiot. And I'm like, you're insulting me thinking that I am stupid because you're trying to pull a fast one over me when it's like the reasons that you're giving me are not good and even good excuses are good reasoning as to why you're doing what you're doing so um i have a lot of stories if you want to hear more stories please let me know um i do plan on doing a part two with my husband about his establishment that he used to work at, if he decides he wants to tell you where he worked, that's up to him. But I know that I definitely do not want problems with my ex jobs. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys want to see from me. Um, I will be doing more story times if you guys want to hear them. I have lots of story times. So this is AZ Ames signing off. Bye guys.